according to reports, uh, a burgundy minivan had pulled up behind her um, and she was supposedly seen talking to two men in between the vehicles. And that was the last time Paige Renkowski was seen, May 24th, 1990. It's a case that continues to baffle investigators. Paige Renkowski was a substitute school teacher who disappeared without a trace. But even after nearly three decades now, her family and investigators have never stopped looking or hoping. And tonight, local Ford defender Karen Drew has the latest in the case. I mean, somebody knows something. Right. And somebody needs to say something. Right. Michelle Hollis is Paige Renkowski's younger sister. At 53 years old, she continues to look for answers to one of Michigan's oldest cold cases, the disappearance of her sister. We haven't had much, you know, any new information really in quite some time. May 24th, 1990, investigators say Paige Renkowski dropped off her mother at Detroit Metro Airport around 11.30 in the morning, then went to visit a friend in Canton. Sometime between 2.30 and 2.45, she was seen at a store west of I-275 in Canton where she bought a beer, a beer later found in her car. Renkowski was last seen on the shoulder of I-96 near Fowlerville. Somebody got her to pull over at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a freeway. I mean, how does that even happen? Witnesses told police they saw Paige standing on the shoulder talking to a man standing next to a maroon-colored minivan. Hours later, the 1986 Oldsmobile Cutlass she had been driving was found on the side of Interstate 96 near the Fowlerville exit. And um, it was running, her shoes were in it, her purse was in it. Uh, she wasn't. I've never worked on anything like this before. Hard to believe that somebody can vanish without a trace like this. While Paige's family searches for answers. Richard Hitchcock went missing on December 22nd. They are also there for other families who have loved ones missing. I caught up with them at this recent Missing in Michigan event, an annual event the family attends. Each ribbon here represents the 4,000 people who are missing in Michigan right now. As I feel like you're using a lot of your experience to help others, what makes you show up here? Because it's been a lot of um, The support, and we have a great family mm -hmm. here, really, they've become family with people that know and understand you really how we feel and and um, our stories are all completely different yet they're the same in a lot of different aspects and so we can bounce things off each other as families. Nicole Harris is 23 years old. She never met her Aunt Paige. She grew up surrounded by the mystery of her disappearance. How do you live your life differently? Um, I'm always aware of my surroundings like my mom taught me. Do you have a theory? Do you have a concept? Um, not entirely, but every time that I am driving down the highway, I think to myself, I'm like, okay, if I was to pull over, like, what would get me to pull over if somebody flagged me down? What could it have been? The mystery of her aunt's disappearance is the driving force for her to pursue a degree in criminal justice. I was just really interested in it and wanted to get involved and see if maybe I could be of assistance in solving a case. The family tells me every time they do speak to the media, the police tend to get calls and that is what they're hoping for. Even if the fact seems mundane or perhaps trivial, they need answers, they need clues, they need closure to what happened to Paige Renkowski. You can call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP. I'm Karen Drew, Local 4 Defenders.